Hello there, YouTube. It's your boy B3, back with another kicking, you guessed it, graphic novel review. We are still doing Weird DC. I know it's been taking months, but I'm trying to upload these once a week. And Weird DC is just what I've been wanting to read. Sorry, folks. But today, we're actually going back to Swamp Thing. And you guys know Swamp Thing is one of my favorite characters. We are looking at Saga of the Swamp Thing, book one. Very, very cool. And this is the Alan Moore Swamp Thing. Who doesn't love Alan Moore? Well, DC Comics doesn't, but I mean, he's responsible for a lot of their success, so they really should. But yeah, he wrote Watchmen, a book that we have talked about on this channel before many times, and it does have its own video. It is a full comic review, but it mainly focuses on why it's straight up not adaptable. <laughs> but yeah, this is from DC's Vertigo imprint. Uh, Saga of the Swamp Thing, book one. Let me read you the back of the book. From eight, not eight, god damn, I already messed up. From 1983 through 1987, a young British writer named Alan Moore revolutionized the American comic book. His groundbreaking tenure on DC Comics Swamp Thing set new standards for graphic storytelling and touched off a revolution in the medium that is still expanding today. Building on the title's framework of gothic horror with a remarkably intuitive narrative style and an unprecedented depth of characterization, Moore's vision was realized through the hauntingly beautiful artwork of such collaborators as Stephen Bissett, John Tolbin, Dan Day, and Rick Veitch. The result is one of comics' most enduring masterpieces. The first of six volumes collects Moore's entire run, including issues 20 through 27 of the Saga of the Swamp Thing, and also features a foreword by famed horror author Ramsey Campbell and an introduction by Swamp Thing co-creator and original series editor Lynn Wine, who I believe has passed, may he rest in peace. Uh, and it's also for mature readers. Like, very mature readers. But it is a really, really incredible book the art is undescribable absolutely undescribable just the covers alone are high art <laughs> in all truth dead serious and the colors uh Moore's unique paneling style everything is just so beautifully laid out you really, I, I, I wish I could describe it, but I can't. And I don't want to show images of the book. I want this to be like a listenable review because when I listen to stuff like this, I, I, or when I watch videos like this, I just listen to them typically while I do something else. But oh well. Anyhow, we have Swamp Thing. And his arch nemesis, Anton Arcane, has just died in a UFO <laughs> crash. <laughs> And this is all spoilers for the run before this, by the way. And Abigail Arcane, she and her husband, their relationship is not well. She doesn't really love him, and I think he thinks he loves her, but he really doesn't. And all these creatures were appearing that Swamp Thing was fighting, and it turns out he was subconsciously conjuring them with these reality-warping powers. And he got them under control and told Abigail they were gone. But they're not gone. He's using them to make himself feel powerful, and he's also using them to fuck. He is making, like, these construct women from his psyche to ride his dicklet, because Abigail uh, won't have marital relations with him. He's also becoming an alcoholic, arguing with her. And there are times in this that are touching, where you see that they do have some kind of positive feelings for each other. But that marriage just isn't working for them anymore. No matter what they try. It's kind of sad, but written in like a very realistic kind of way. It's very, very interesting. In all truth. We also have the military hunting Swamp Thing, and they kill him. And this, but this is before he gets 
all his new powers. Like all of Swamp Thing's coolest abilities come from the Alan Moore run. All of Swamp Thing's coolest lore comes from the Alan Moore run. Yeah, he gets riddled with bullets, but he doesn't actually die because Alan Moore has begun to introduce the concept of the green. And Swamp Thing is now going to be getting the power to heal himself with the green, make new bodies out of plants, and teleport from one side of the earth to the other as long as there is a plant there for him to make a body out of. And then Jason Woodrow, the Floronic Man, who is arguably Alan Mo not Alan Moore. <laughs> I was going to say arguably Alan Moore's greatest foe. Arguably Swamp Thing's greatest foe. Alan Moore's greatest foe was uh, Corporate Comics. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, Woodrow is arguably Swamp Thing's arch-villain. Many would say Anton Arcane. Uh, but there's also an argument for Jason Woodrow. For me... I don't know. It's, it's actually really hard for me to pick it out. Hmm. But, oh well. The Floronic Man, Woodrow, is doing experiments on Swamp Thing's frozen body and discovers Swamp Thing's interesting new abilities to heal if he's unfrozen and whatnot. But also, that Swamp Thing could heal, like right now, it could just jump to another body if he wanted, but he's being held back by the belief that he's human and by the belief that his body is mortal. Like, he made organs for himself in his body, but they don't actually function. He's just used to having organs. And so Woodrow finds out that not only is this body not really made to, the, to do what it looks like it was made to do, but he also discovers that this is not Alec Holland. He discovers that it's a plant that thinks it's Alec Holland, because Alec Holland's consciousness was imprinted upon it on his death. If you watched my review for Volume 5 of the New 52 Swamp Thing, you'll see where the Alec Holland Swamp Thing actually interacts with this Swamp Thing that just has his memories and his moral code. It's actually very interesting, but Woodrow, you know, kind of gets into a bit of a disagreement with uh, the big tycoon that's funding all this. Uh, and he is an opponent that we'll see Swamp Thing go up against in the future. Or at least that we'll see, uh, we'll at least see Swamp Thing go up against his company. But Swamp Thing just, uh, finds out. He reads Woodrow's file on him and finds out that he's not Alec Holland. And Alec Holland wouldn't have killed this greedy corporate bastard. But when you find out you're not Alec Holland... Things change, and you become a murderer. Horrific. God, the paneling is so good for the whole thing, too. So Swamp Thing, this, you know, puts him in a deep depression. He goes back to the swamp, and he kind of roots himself in the swamp and stops interacting with the world. He just kind of makes himself a big green mound. And Abigail wants him to wake up. Uh, and her husband really doesn't seem to care that much because he's quite jealous of her affection for Swamp Thing, and she does want to smash, trust me. I read New 52. <laughs> huh. So Abigail gets a job at this home for troubled children. A lot of them just seem to be autistic, in a way. And Swamp Thing is having dreams while Abigail does this, and she meets this one child who talks about this monkey king that wants to kill people who spell things incorrectly. And the reason he thinks it wants to kill people who spell things incorrectly is because his parents kind of spelled something incorrectly before it killed them. It's very interesting. It's very, very interesting. And describing it in full, I don't feel like I could do it justice. You just have to read this book. Like, I know there's spoilers in this review, but you have to read this book. Uh, it's like poetry. It's high art. Honest to God. It doesn't get better. But yeah, Woodrow is telling Abigail and them that he's a friend of Swamp Things, but he isn't. 
and he taps into the green and it kind of drives him insane you know which doesn't work well for him and so Woodrow's like hey I'm gonna use the green to kill all fauna on the planet all animal life let's do it but Swamp Thing has to get back up to stop him and Jason's like what no I'm gonna save the green by killing all uh, animal life and the Justice League can't even stop him and Swamp Thing's like hey dumbass <laughs> If you kill all the fauna, who's going to pollinate the plants? Huh? Who's going to create the fertilizer that lets plants grow? Who's going to breathe out the carbon dioxide that plants breathe in? We straight up need animal life for plants to survive, you moron. <laughs> and Woodrow was like, oh my god, the, the green and the power, it just... It just went to my head. I didn't think about it. Swamp Thing was like, no, you didn't. And now I'm going to kick your ass. God, what a book. What a horrific book. But in a good way. In the horrific that it's supposed to be, you know? <laughs> but this kind of brings Swamp Thing sort of back to the land of the living to an extent. And, you know, Abigail is working with the troubled children and... Jason Blood shows up. So now we're getting some Etrigan action. Jack Kirby's demon. And he's like predicting people's horrible, horrible, horrible deaths, but also doing nothing to stop them. And he fights alongside Swamp Thing to fight this demon that has attached itself to this child. And it wants to kill, but it needs direction to be bound to this plane. And it wants the child to give him that direction. But it won't. And it's a really good horror story. And I really like the characterization of the kid as well. I really like everyone's characterization. These characters are just so goddamn good. Holy shit. Also, Abigail's husband. He's in a bit of a car crash. He has a car crash. And this fly, this talking fly, offers to, like, save his life because he's dying in his crumpled vehicle. It crawls into his mouth, and it does save him, but it also seems to possess him. So now, the guy that had what appeared to be reality-warping powers now is possessed by something. What? We don't find out. We'll just have to keep reading. And yes, I will review book two at some point, but right now I got some other stuff I want to do. I'm trying not to do the same character twice in a row. Like, I actually really wanted to do the next volume of Task Force Z, but that was the last one I did. So I was like, ah, you know what, I'll separate it with the Swamp Thing and maybe another thing between them, uh, just to really kind of split them up good. But Saga of the Swamp Thing, book one by Alan Moore and team, is an incredible triumph in writing, in illustration, and in their combination. I... If I could ever write anything, even an eighth, as good as this, I think I would be content. More than content. I would be proud as fuck. It's an amazing book that everyone over the age of 18 should read. So that's it. Thank you all very much for your support. Please remember to rate, comment, subscribe. Check out all the cool links in the description below, Facebook, Twitter, etc. as an uh. And I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.